G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. This time, uh, this is a bit of a part two of a video that I did a couple of days ago or whenever I decided to release this particular one. The video I did was talking about some of the biggest draft misses in recent times by various clubs. And today, we're gonna do the flip side of that and look at some of the biggest draft hits that clubs have had over a number of years. So again, this one is a little nuanced. But in most instances, there are examples of clubs who have plucked, you know, gun players out of nowhere. Now, there's a couple of important clarifications with this particular video. I have decided to exclude rookie selections and at all types of academy players for two different reasons. So first of all, rookie selections, I felt was worth its own video. Otherwise this would be dominated by rookie selections. So stay tuned for that on the channel. Anyone who's taken in a rookie draft uh, will not be included in this particular video. I'll do a separate video for that. Additionally, uh, academies and father sons, again, like a lot, there's a lot of examples of father sons and academies doing well late in drafts. But the purposes of this video is really trying to more isolate where clubs did really, really well. So for instance, Josh Dacos being bidded on right at the end of the 2016 draft or whatever it was. You can't really give Collingwood too much credit for that. Same thing with Errol Golden being picked in the 30s. That's kind of more about whether other clubs were willing to bid on those players earlier. The thing about draft hits is that there's a way more examples of clubs doing well with late picks than by contrast when I did draft misses. That one was a little bit harder to weed out specific examples where I think a club made a mistake. This time, there was like 30 or 40 examples I could have included in this video. So in this video, I've tried to isolate it to the top 15 or so selections I could pick, um, but I'm thinking as another part two of this video, because I'm on a bit of a creative streak right now, I was thinking of going through every individual club's best draft hits um, as a, another way of just getting more names out there because there's way too many to include in one single video. As I sort of did in the last video as well, I, I listed a number of um, picks and examples that I wasn't going to include. So I'll do that the same in this one. And this time, I'm just not including these players because I referenced them in my first video. So if you haven't seen it already, go watch my biggest AFL draft misses video. It was only a few days ago. So in this video, rather than repeat myself, I'm just going to shout out the following picks that, uh, that I won't be including in this video. Those include Patrick Cripps at pick 13, Jordan Dugowie at pick 5, Josh Dunkley not being bid on by Sydney or, or matched by Sydney. Took Miller at pick 29 to Car uh, Gold Coast when Carlton took Viojo Rainbow the pick before. Zach Butters at pick 12 when Caldwell went the pick before. And Sean Darcy late in the 2016 draft. So the only reason I'm not including them is because I don't want to repeat myself. In a funny way, I have kind of included it anyway, but I didn't want to spend time on those when I've already included those in a previous video. So we're all about fresh content here. So we'll crack on with about the 15 best uh, draft picks that I've been able to find since about 2013. Now I have done a previous video where I talked about the greatest all time picks I think with Druzy, but I wanted something a little bit more contemporary, a bit more fresh content. So we're gonna start with everything from 2013. I've done it in a random order too. It's not in chronological order, which is because that's fun. Probably the best example I could find or among the best is Tom Stewart in 2016 when Geelong drafted him with pick 40. Now he was a mature age selection who was playing for Geelong's uh, VFL side and not long before that he was playing amateurs. He was drafted at the age of 23 and like I said in a previous video, he's won five out of the last six all Australian jumpers for his position. He's also won two best and fairest for Geelong. So as far as examples of great late draft picks go, Tom Stewart is just about top of the list. Secondly, uh, I have gone back to 2013 for this one and Essendon's selection in the second round of this draft. At pick 26, they took young Zach Merritt. Now, this one particularly stands out to me. 26 is not exactly a really late pick or anything like that, but I do remember thinking that Zach Merritt didn't have that much of a profile uh, on him prior to that draft. There wasn't a lot of hype. In fact, when he got picked up, I thought it might have had more to do with the fact that they were kind of just pairing the Merritt brothers because... Jackson, uh, Zach's older brother, was already on Essendon's list, but this guy's played 206 games. He's won three All-Australian jumpers as a midfielder and an absolute top liner. So Essendon very well with pick 26 here. Then in 2013 again, uh, we have James Sicily, who went at pick 55 in this draft to the Hawthorne Football Club, of course. Uh, he has become a wonderfully consistent player, super impactful for Hawthorne, of course, and he's now their captain. He won an All-Australian jumper for the first time this year, but we've known for a little while now that James Sicily is an absolute gun. So to get him at pick 55 in a draft is wonderful recruiting. 
Again, in 2013, there's a couple of late gems in this one. I've got pick 43, the West Coast Eagles selecting Tom Barris. Now, Tom Barris is uh, probably the Eagles' best player from that draft. Dom Sheed would be the second one. And he won the Eagles' best and fairest last year. And on his day, I, I do think he's one of the best key backs in the competition. Not absolute top tier, but pretty much not far off the absolute best. Funnily enough, another West Australian key position defender went the next pick, Aaliyah Aaliyah, to the Sydney Swans, but I'll talk about that one a little bit later. Let's talk about 2014 now, and I'm going to package two picks together because they went one after the other. We're looking at picks 45 and 46 of this 2014 draft where the Western Bulldogs had back-to-back -back selections, and they added two All-Australian defenders with these selections, Bailey Dale at 45 and Caleb Daniel with 46. Dale was All-Australian in 2021. Daniel was All-Australian in 2020. And the Daniel one was interesting in particular because he was considered almost sort of like another Nick Watson in terms of he was really short. He's significantly shorter than uh, Nick Watson, about three centimeters shorter. Maybe not with the same electrifying talent, but his highlight reel was very, very appealing. And there was a lot of fans excited about him, but he slid in the draft due to his height. But this vindicates the Western Bulldogs. They took the pun on him out of South Australia. And uh, yeah, with these two selections, the Bulldogs absolutely struck gold. Now let's jump ahead in time a little bit to 2017. At pick 31, the Melbourne Demons had this selection and they took another mature ager in Bailey Fritch, a forward who, if I'm not mistaken, was also playing ammos not long before he was drafted. But this guy's production has been insane, particularly in the 21 and 22 seasons where he kicked 114 goals over 48 games. And of course, who can forget six goals in that grand final? He's an unbelievable player. Probably the best in the league for his specific type of player as a lead up medium forward, super damaging. Melbourne did really well here, taking a punt on a mature ager. In 2019, we have to shout out the Sydney Swans for seeing what others didn't at pick 39 and taking Chad Warner from East Fremantle, who again, was another player that didn't have a whole lot of pre-draft hype or much of a profile. He's now played 60 games for him and is at times looked like one of the best young midfielders in the competition. He was a super important player to Sydney getting to the grand final in 2022 and you know probably didn't have the same spark this year, but again, still projected to be a top line midfielder for many years to come. We then look at Fremantle in 2016. Now they did really well in this particular draft uh, with a number of good selections, Sean Darcy and Brennan Cox aside as well. But this one is close to their best one. Um, again, I have excluded Sean Darcy from this video, but let's talk about Luke Ryan, who was taken as a mature rager out of Victoria. I think he was drafted about 20 years old or maybe a little bit older than that. But he won an All-Australian jumper and Fremantle's best and fairest in 2020 and was in the All-Australian squad again this year with statistically a career best season, averaging about 24 touches and eight marks a game and a super vital cog in that Fremantle backline, which has been a relative strength for them. Now we jump forward to 2016 where North Melbourne had pick 73, one of the last um, picks in that draft. And again, it's been a while since we've seen drafts actually go that late, but North Melbourne took a punt on a kid called Nick Larkey. And in particular, in recent times, we're really starting to see the fruits of that selection. He obviously kicked 71 goals this year, finished high in the Coleman. To do that in a side that finished second last, and not only second last, but a distant second last, and win an All-Australian jumper shows that this kid has prodigious talent. So Nick Larkey at pick 73 was a masterstroke. In pick 2017, I will shout out the Gold Coast Suns because at pick 42, they took a punt on a skinny utility out of South Australia called Charlie Ballard, who has developed into a very, very good intercepting 196 centimeter kind of key defender, if you like. He's a bit more of a hybrid defender. He's an absolute gun of the competition, I reckon. And uh, in the redraft of 2017, I reselected him at pick 10 for the Carlton Footy Club. So again, I think Gold Coast, for all their access to high picks, this was a later one where they really got it right. In that same draft, 14 selections earlier, at pick 28, the GWS Giants had a look at Sam Taylor and they took the punt on him and that has really paid off. Again, I remember him being a talented prospect, but no one really could have foreseen exactly how good Sam Taylor would become winning an All-Australian jumper in 2022 and it being around the mark again in 2023. And I honestly think Sam Taylor is one of the best young key defenders in the league, if not the best. It's a little bit arbitrary, depends how you de define young, but Sam Taylor is an absolute star. Then we can take a look at 2015 and Nathan Broad was selected at pick 67 by the Richmond Footy Club, which again turned out to be an absolutely wonderful selection. A mature rager drafted out of the Swan Districts, drafted at 22, and he is now a three-time Premiership defender. 
Maybe it doesn't have the, the same star potential as some of the other names listed on here, but a seriously important player for Richmond, who was one of the best teams of the modern era. In 2017, Geelong at pick 57 took a bit of a slider. I remember Brian Myers was meant to go a little bit earlier than this, but they uh, had him fall into their laps a little bit, but you still give him credit for it. He has become a very, very good high half forward for the Cats, mostly in recent seasons, and plays really well in that system, I suppose. And he led the league this year for goal assists and was a wonderfully impactful player. So at pick 57, you would take that every day of the week. And finally, I think this is the 15th player I'm going to name, uh, but at pick 76 of the 2016 draft, we had the Hawthorne Football Club take a punt on someone called Mitchell Lewis. Ironically, in an offseason where they had just traded Jordan Lewis and Sam Mitchell. Um, everyone sort of made note of that and thought it was kind of a funny meme, but Mitch Lewis has turned out to be a very good young key forward of the competition. Now, we haven't seen him play more than 15 games in a season. I presume that's because his body hasn't held up, but over those last two years, he's played in 30 games, 15 games twice, and he's kicked a 73 goals. So that output is very, very hard to argue with. And you just imagine that when he gets a full season, as Hawthorne improve, he could get some seriously high goal tallies. His career tally is 120 goals, from 66 games, which is nearly two a game. So to start your career like that is very impressive. And at that later pick, he's definitely worth a mention for this video. Now there's a couple of iffy ones that I wanted to include, but I kind of decided against it. Um, two of them, and they're both around the Sydney Football Club. So I talked about Ali Ralea going at pick 44 to the Sydney Swans. In terms of uh, talent identification, absolutely. But we didn't really see Ali Ralea fulfill any kind of potential until he had joined Port Adelaide. I'm not saying he was a bad player at Sydney, but he joined Port Adelaide, becomes an All-Australian defender. Sydney didn't really see the fruits of that. Yeah, so that's the phrase I'm using at the moment, I guess. So therefore, I just kind of excluded it, but it's still worth a shout out. And then in 2015 at pick 56, this was a byproduct of not matching a Josh Dunkley bid. They took pick 56 to the draft and took Jordan Dawson. Jordan Dawson probably was worth including in this. Had he had his best career season, which he did this year at Adelaide, had he had that at the Sydney Swans, he'd probably be one of the first names picked in this list. But because he merely was good for them for a little bit of period of time and then exploded at Adelaide, he just didn't quite make the cut. But anyway, guys, that is my take on the best 15 draft steals or draft hits, that, if you want to call it that. Again, there was so many missing, and it's pretty hard to separate a lot of these. So like I said, I'm going to include some more names in future videos where I talk about each individual club's best draft hits. I haven't decided whether I do one per club or several, or I'll figure that out. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Hope you're enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.